Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending today. My name is Curtis Brandon. I am the federal lead for the outreach portfolio for the Strategic Outreach and Communications VA Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. Thank you for attending today's webinar, What SCORE Can Do For You. Today I have with me my colleague, Nicole Hines, and Mr. Norman Sealy will be attending shortly. For your awareness, this training is being recorded. A copy of this presentation will be provided to you as well as the recording. A few housekeeping notes. All questions that you have, that you may have during this presentation, please place them in the Q&A box. Throughout this presentation, my colleagues will be assigning me with helping me, assisting me will help me answer the questions, giving them to Mr. Johnson. The VA's mission statement is clear, to care for whom has shall borne the battle of his widow and his orphan. It's simply stated, we are obligated to not only care for and support the veteran, but their loved ones as well. Here in Osdebu, our mission statement directly undergirds the thought through the prioritization of enabling veterans to gain access to economic opportunities through our policies and our programs. Further, the strategic outreach and communications statement directly ties into VA's five core values in that veterans and small businesses have earned our respect. So we strive to do everything with integrity and excellence, and we are committed to advocacy for small businesses through awareness of VA small business programs and their resources. Today, I will be joined by Mr. Lynn Johnson, Washington, D.C.'s SCORE mentor. Mr. Johnson received a BFA degree in graphic design from the University of Illinois. During the Vietnam War era, he enlisted in the Army to serve as a photographer. He was assigned to Okinawa, Japan, where he was stationed there for three years. Upon separation from the Army, he and his wife moved to Washington, D.C. He worked in a graphic design firm for three years and brought the firm upon the owner's retirement. While he owned his company, it was awarded a GSA scheduled contract for advertising and integrated marketing services. His government class included GSA, USAID, the Federal Trade Commission, and NASCOR. With the assistance of a SCORE mentor, he sold his business to a local area public relations firm. He continued to help build the business until he retired. Lynn now volunteers as a SCORE mentor to help others aspiring entrepreneurs achieve their goals and dreams. So now, Mr. Johnson, as I introduce you, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know I gave you a brief synopsis, the audience, a brief synopsis about yourself. But if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got here, much appreciated. Thank you. Well, thank you for the kind introduction, Curtis. Uh, so I was fortunate in my um, career path that I had studied something that uh, was useful to the service, and that was that I had studied uh, photography when I was in college. I also studied graphic design, but uh, I was fortunate that uh, when I wanted to uh, enter military service during the Vietnam era, uh, there was an opportunity to join uh, as an enlistment uh, as a photographer, and, and that was an amazing experience in itself. But um, then coming to Washington, I was very fortunate in that uh, Washington was just setting up, well, they had a, a schedules program. GSA is General Services Administration, and it is one of the major avenues for contracting with the federal government. And I was fortunate that one of my clients, um, his wife worked at GSA, and uh, she said that, you know, Len, if you really want to do business with the government, <clears throat> GSA is setting up a, a, a program that really is going to 
make it more government contracts more accessible to small business and especially veteran owned small businesses and women owned small businesses and there because there are set asides for uh, people that have those uh, qualifications and so with that i ended up applying for the uh, gsa schedule and it was for my category it was called aims advertising and integrated marketing services and with that it allowed me to um, really work some amazing uh, clients like the federal trade commission do not call campaign uh, usaid branding and and, and another um, number of high profile clients with government. But uh, when I wanted to sell my business after having bus business like 25 years, there was value because of the contracts that I had with government, but also commercial clients. And uh, I have, was eager to get the most value out of my business and SCORE, and again, the acronym originally was Service Corps of Retired Executives. Now, not all of our SCORE uh, mentors are retired executives, some of them are not. But the fact is that um, that was the SCORE mission, was to um, provide uh, volunteer mentors for businesses that want to start up or, or even uh, any stage of their business. <clears throat> and in my situation, I had a SCORE mentor that helped me do the valuation for my business when I wanted to sell it. Because I mean, I could uh, write a number on a napkin and it wouldn't mean anything <clears throat> unless I had some validation. And so that um, SCORE mentor actually went through an analysis of our past history in terms of how uh, the contracts we had and how we grew the business and the value of the contracts that were still in place. And so that instead of me dreaming a number out of a, a, a just a, a nightmare. <laughs> it was a case where the SCORE mentor was able to take uh, the valuation of the contracts that we had and the uh, history of the growth of the company and help to uh, quantify that in a way that it was a number that I could go to the uh, prospective clients that wanted to buy my business. And so if it wasn't that I would just came up on a napkin and dreamed of some number, I had a SCORE mentor that was qualified in doing that kind of business analysis to validate what my company might be worth. And so as it turned out, I ended up in negotiation with three different companies, settled uh, on one which I saw would give me the best value. And in that process, I negotiated the opportunity to stay with the company uh, because my own um, reputation and, and employees were valuable to the company that acquired mine. So it allowed us to create a bridge to my retirement. And uh, I stayed five years in the company that acquired mine. And uh, then uh, at that point decided, well, maybe I could be a SCORE mentor. And SCORE mentors come from all different uh, backgrounds. and, and um, and some of them large businesses and uh, others and small businesses. And so that what our role at, at SCORE is, is really to look for what it is that a potential client has and how they can market their business and how to develop it and um, grow their business. And so that's the, the mission of SCORE really is to help entrepreneurs become more successful. And having enjoyed that kind of success with having SCORE, frankly, as my client, and then uh, a number of government clients uh, in my uh, client database and network, it allowed me to, again, stay in a transition period where I collected a bonus on the contracts that I brought in to the new company that acquired mine. So that was kind of the path that allowed me to uh, go full circle with SCORE as having uh, had it as a client, have um, had benefited as I uh, exited my business, and now have the pleasure of serving small businesses and helping mentor them to achieve their success. That's awesome, man. What an awesome story. And awesome success story as well. So thank you for that. You know, just want to dig in a little bit about SCORE, 
um, and the things that you guys do, because you do some great work, you know. Um, and I know you retired one time. Will you retire from school again? At some point, maybe. But uh, right now, I still really enjoy the interaction with small business clients and uh, actually uh, seeing their success and, and their business stories. And uh, frankly, in our role as mentors, um, sometimes we see clients that are wannabes that shouldn't be. But it's not our approach to mentoring. It's we're looking for every avenue to help a client become more successful. And if at some point they realize that it's not a path for them, then maybe guide them to somebody that can help them exit their business. But uh, our goal is to really help small businesses achieve success. Awesome. So what if I was a small business and just looking for some resources? There's plenty of resources out there. Um, where do I go to learn about SCORE, FAST SCORE? What is the actual acronyms of SCORE? Well, at www.score.org, uh, SCORE has a national website. And at that national website, and the, actually the uh, headquarters for SCORE is out in um, Herndon, Virginia. But um, the website is truly a national site and SCORE, in fact, is in every state in the country. And you can go to the SCORE website and then you can find a chapter in your state. And then you can look for, uh, do a database search for SCORE Mentor based on their business experience or based on their location. And so I mentor, uh, I mean, with the SCORE DC chapter, Washington DC chapter. And so most of my clients come from uh, Virginia and DC and sometimes Maryland, but we have uh, SCORE mentors at, uh, uh, again, a, a chapter in uh, Maryland as well. So that there are chapters all across the country and um, at some point, when we find a client that we maybe don't have the expertise, we may refer them to a mentor in another state or another chapter so that we're not, our clients aren't limited by our location. But the beauty of the organization is that it is truly a national organization. And SCORE has an introduction process, in other words, a training program when uh, people choose to, they, most SCORE mentors are in fact retired. That was the original acronym was Service Corps of Retired Executives was what the SCORE acronym was. But some of them, uh, uh, frankly, are, are not uh, even retired and they're still active in mentoring uh, entrepreneurs and um, small business startups. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, if I, is it scoring all 50 states? Yes, it is. Uh, I believe, I shouldn't be so certain about it, but I'm almost certain that it, there is a score chapter in all 50 states. Tell, tell them a little bit about how, um, when you joined your business organization um, and you created the first website for score. Yes. When it was created. <laughs> I'm sorry, what about that? You said you created the first website for SCORE when it was created. This right. was when you was a small business owner, correct? Correct. Yes, that is correct. And then we did some marketing brochures for them as well. Um, and so that's why I became so uh, knowledgeable uh, and dedicated to their mission and, and now honored to be able to serve as a SCORE mentor. Ah, oh, that's awesome work. So are there any... um? Does it cost to actually pay to get into the score program or get a mentor? Is it a fee or anything? No, there, there is no fee to get a score mentor. And um, our mentors are all volunteers. So there's no payment and reimbursement for the uh, score program and for our mentoring activities. Uh, and that's frankly what I'm so proud of in the mission is, is that it's people that are dedicated to success of small business owners or people that want to be a, a, a small business person. And uh, we have, there, there's such a diversity in our uh, chapter and across the country. So that it, there are um, a lot of SCORE mentors that are 
women owned or minority owned uh, small businesses. And so that you can actually find a small business by uh, a search by location or um, by business uh, experience. And, and that's, again, one of the beauties of um, the SCORE organization is that at the website, you can search with some keywords and find uh, a mentor that best meets your goals and your needs. It's not that you're going to be assigned by uh, to somebody that is uh, in a totally different business area that you want to pursue. Awesome. That's good. That way that, you know, if I'm, you know, moving to relocate, do I relocate and get another mentor in another state or I can keep the same mentor? You I know we all virtual now. And let's just say I love Mr. Johnson. I do not want to leave you. <laughs> you know, and I know we virtual right now. You have done some great work and that work has shown, but I don't want to leave you. Is it possible I can stay with you or is it um, more effective if that actual um, small business, they relocate or live somewhere else, be paired with a mentor in that locality? Well, they can always uh, choose a, a new mentor in another locale or because of, again, we're doing uh, mentoring by Zoom, uh, a, men, a client can continue working with me if they end up moving to another part of the country. So it's the, up to the client's choice. And uh, the, the, a mentor's network on SCORE, you can actually uh, look at the SCORE database online at SCORE.org and you can um, then enter some keywords and look for a mentor. And it doesn't have to be in your uh, local jurisdiction. And again, that's the beauty of what's going on with the uh, Zoom mentoring. Uh, a lot of it has moved to uh, long distance mentoring, but it's up to the client. The, new, the client controls the relationship in terms of how long they want to go to that uh, mentor or whether they would look for a men mentor with a different area of experience. Uh, and as in the, my case, when I wanted to sell my business, I had a a mentor that actually was a financial type guy that could uh, look at the uh, income statements from my business and do an evaluation and, and help me put a price on the business when I went to sell it. So it wasn't just a, a, on a whim that I picked a price that I wanted to sell and uh, it allowed me to get full value when I went to sell. And so that's where the SCORE mentors have so wide a variety of experience that you can put in keywords and search for someone that best meets your current need. Got it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, what kind of workshop does SCORE Mentors host? Um, and how do you sign up for those workshops? I know you guys host several small business workshops. Mm -hmm. So what kind of workshops do you guys host? Well, there are a number of them, and I encourage you to go to SCORE.org. Uh, and you can see workshops and um, each chapter may have their own workshops. Some workshops may be conducted online and um, uh, some workshops are again in local chapters. And so they're organized by the chapter uh, officers within a local chapter. So that it, it's, there's no limit to how you can get in touch with a SCORE mentor and what topics you can uh, have advisement on based on starting at the national uh, website at www.score.org. Uh, and from there, you can, like I say, look for avenues. Now, on that website, there's also a lot of free content. Uh, you can do some research for uh, documents that, uh, frankly, the uh, how to start a business. Um, if you attend a um, a seminar on um, uh, writing a, a um, business plan, you can get a, a template for that from SCORE. And so that there are a lot of resources on the SCORE website itself that can help an entrepreneur uh, in addition to having a, a, a mentor. And I, I do highly recommend finding a mentor that, that uh, and it's not at every stage of your business. As a nice example, I had a mentor when I went to sell the business, but if you're in a startup phase, a mentor can provide services and support in that role as well. And so that, and that's why I, I think the motto or, of SCORE is for the life of your business, that whether it's your startup, growth, 
or exit strategy? A score can play a role in your business success. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that y'all host workshops. Is the workshops pin, um, predicated around the small businesses with their ideas of, you know, um, some workshops that they may, may need assistance on and they can make ideas to the actual score for those workshops to be created? Uh, they certainly can. Uh, there are some that are kind of the staple of uh, the workshops that are presented. But uh, if somebody uh, wanted to present a SCORE uh, workshop, uh, they can certainly approach uh, the SCORE, likely go to the SCORE chapter within their um, location, meaning geographic area. But you're not limited by geographic area to what uh, SCORE mentor that you're working with. But in fact, if you wanted to give a workshop for SCORE, um, you um, might uh, approach the uh, SCORE officer that's president of the organization and say that I'd like to have a workshop that I can present that might be taped and put on the SCORE site. Uh, that might be an option as well. But uh, it's the client or the, the business owner or the startup really is in control of the relationship. And it's up to that person to really dig and research what they want out of SCORE because SCORE offers so much and it's not limited to that one-to-one -one business relationship with the SCORE mentor. So you're basically telling me SCORE is not limited to just veterans. No, SCORE not at all. SCORE is limited I, I, to yeah. the entire so, social economic category. Yeah, it, it's exactly right. It, there's no limit to who can seek SCORE services. Uh, I happen to have been a veteran and I'm honored to have served in that role. and. Uh, then serve veterans that are seeking to start uh, a business, but it's not limited to uh, veterans by any means. And uh, the life cycle of uh, SCORE is for the life of your business is kind of our mantra, is whether you're a business startup or growing or selling or exiting your business, it's SCORE for the life of your business. That's awesome. So how long can I actually, how long can I have an actual score mentor? Um, is it something that, you know, um, lasts a year, two years? Is it five years? How long is a mentor available to me? Well, it's no limit. And uh, it really is in the control of the client <clears throat> in the sense of uh, what value they're getting in terms of this relationship. And because it's not one you're paying for, you are in total control of when you start and when you may exit. Uh, the relationship or look for a new mentor. In some cases, a SCORE mentor may advise you to make an appointment with a, another mentor, even if it's uh, across country, because with Zoom, our mentorship is not so much limited by face-to-face -face contact now. But um, if there's a certain area, for example, a financial areas, it's not my strength, and I may uh, suggest that uh, a client go to someone in the SCORE database that has banking experience or financial experience. And so that that's, again, the, the beauty of the SCORE relationship. The client is in control and they can seek what resources we have. And on the websites, there are some um, documents that can uh, be like an outline for a business plan. So things that, that can be very useful to you and help you in the growth of your business. Well, I'm glad you stated that you can help with a business plan. Uh, we get a lot of uh, questions about capability statements and who can assist with their capability statements, who can, you know, uh, maybe make a review or just even start that capability statement mm -hmm. as far as templates. Mm -hmm. Is that something that SCORE offers? There are certainly templates. I do want to um, be very clear about that we are not the producers of, um, like if it's your business plan, we may give you a template uh, and an outline and review what your progress is, but we are not responsible for hands-on writing the documents and preparing the things because the business owner needs to own that process and what they put into the documents because we don't wanna be responsible legally in any way for uh, stating something that we later find out isn't true. But uh, it's a case of giving the tools and then reviewing the progress that the client makes 
and maybe steering them to other additional resources that can help them become successful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Um, is there a limit to the number of meetings a client can have with a score mentor? Not at all. Uh, it's really up to the client uh, in terms of the frequency. But my own mantra when I uh, have a score, a score mentoring session, uh, I follow up with my notes and then uh, say that you have the link to my calendar. You, we can schedule a, a follow up meeting next week or next month or whatever you, your uh, progress point is. But I want to see progress. I, I don't want to go back and have a follow up meeting that just goes in round in circles where we don't um, make progress so that it's up to the client to make progress and the score mentor to uh, really guide that client to their success. Now, do you, um, with SCORE, how about with like SAM.gov registration, you know, maybe looking at solicitations, those of that nature, do you get that into complexion to um, the government procurement system? I would not personally. Now, there may be some SCORE mentor that would. I don't know. Uh, it may be something that you could, uh, on the SCORE website, when you uh, look for bios uh, and do some keywords, you may find somebody that does, but some of those services are something that there are people in business that uh, it's a fee for service uh, business. And uh, like I say, if it goes beyond what our volunteer role might be, uh, we're not going to take that task on. We want the business owner to own that process and the work product that they deliver. Okay. So what are the specific roles of the actual mentor while they're working with the small business? Um, I know it's to guide them and help them, but what are some things that I make it come to you um, and ask you that I may need um, as far as your services, regardless of the um, uh, business plan and some of, you know, like the capability statement, what if it's just, you know, I want to come to you and see financially how my business is doing, um, do you have any resources for, you know, uh, helping my business grow and things of those natures? Well, there are some SCORE mentors that have a, a banking or financial background. And uh, I think on the SCORE website, you can use some keywords like that and uh, find somebody that might be qualified at a high level to provide advice in the financial area like that. Um, that wasn't my, uh, in fact, I hired a, a business manager from my company uh, to manage some of those details. Uh, and in, it's not in my own uh, portfolio and um, expertise. So it's not something that I personally would ever uh, touch because it, I needed uh, that kind of resource uh, when I had my own business. Okay. As far as, are some store mentors formerly military officers? Definitely. Uh, yeah, we have in our Washington, D.C. chapter, there are uh, a, a number of um, military uh, officers that have been in the, the uh, Air Force or in the Army and have uh, also been uh, business owners or involved in businesses. So that uh, the, the veteran is certainly a, a big part of what SCORE does. And a lot of SCORE mentors have been military uh, veterans. And you can certainly, I think, maybe ser uh, search on uh, volunteer uh, bios and find some that fit the uh, specific need you're looking for. Thank you. All right. Right. So, Mr. Johnson, is there anything else you want to let the audience know about SCORE or anything that we um, small business should know um, to look for when, you know, just starting their small business, if they're looking for the federal procurement process, um, looking to, you know, obtain a G, um, GSA schedule, any of that nature, any of those good nuggets that you may have mm -hmm. to let the small business owners know? Well, in re regards to uh, GSA, it's a, a really a, a network that's uh, very difficult to navigate. But uh, because of the schedules program, there are, are ways to register for alerts for uh, uh, government contracts. And that's one thing that 
I would encourage somebody to do if they're looking to sell to government. But um, ideally, you may find a SCORE mentor and again, search on their bio that um, on government contracting. And, and in my own case, uh, I had a number of government contracts and uh, wrote the proposals to win business, but that's a, a art in itself. And you may need to find um, people that have written government proposals because uh, if you write a sloppy proposal, it's just going to get tossed away and people aren't going to, your proposal won't have credibility if you're trying to win new government business. So that, that's one thing that I sometimes suggest is that find uh, someone that is experienced in writing government proposals that can help you win new contracts. And the other is um, just to register at FedBiz um, Ops and uh, then get alerts for any new business opportunities that might be posted. And then beyond that, different agencies have different requirements. And you can look on their websites, whether it's the uh, uh, Department of Veterans Affairs or mm -hmm. International Association of Business or um, USAID. I mean, there are different organizations that are uh, government related that um, have their own um, procurement websites. And <clears throat> One other thing I suggest, uh, either like I'm looking at uh, LinkedIn um, uh, graphic there, is that to work your network. In other words, uh, LinkedIn is, a, again, a good way to meet people that uh, maybe have opportunities and meet partners uh, and uh, look for social groups that you can join, which allow you to make connections that um, you may not have the full uh, requirements to uh, win a proposal, but uh, if you can find businesses that are bidding on a certain contract, that's an opportunity for you to reach out to them to see if there's a, a piece of the business that you may be qualified for and that they would include your resume and your past performance in a new business proposal. And, and that's a key in terms of how people win business in this government sector is that um, being able to have credibility in past performance. And if there's areas of uh, government that you've had experience in and have uh, knowledge, you can maybe can find a, a company that is looking to pitch their qualifications for a, a new business opportunity. And another thing that I do encourage just in general is to people that are a small businesses is to look to register their small business in the uh, small business websites for states. And I happen to live in Virginia and Virginia has a procurement website and there are opportunities to list your business. And uh, you may then get a request for proposal from those opportunities and that visibility. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. All this great information. So, would SCORE or would you help with writing one of those proposals? If, one, if you had a client to come to you and say, I need help with writing a proposal. I would not be involved in writing the proposal. No. <laughs> and I don't think um, most mentors would. There are people that are professional at writing uh, proposals. In fact, when I had my business, I hired some people that did that for me. Um, but uh, it's not, we're not in the business development role and we're not gonna take responsibility for uh, making the story for your business. So it's important that you get resources and um, most often they're gonna be people that are, that's their business is to write government proposals and they are qualified and they know the lingo and they know the uh, ways to analyze a request for proposal and create the checklist. One thing I um, often say though, is that uh, to look for net your network and what organizations, uh, for example, in LinkedIn that you're listed in and a member of, and you may find business opportunities in your LinkedIn network. And also join uh, their LinkedIn groups. And that's an opportunity for you to uh, join a LinkedIn group and then potentially ask a question 
that may be relevant to your business growth and success. And you may then find a partner for your business just by a discussion group on LinkedIn. And it's something that I, is a kind of a, a backdoor approach that I took in creating visibility for my company by uh, joining, um, like an example in, it was women in public relations. I uh, often hired women in public relations that needed, would fill a role in a contract, but I obviously didn't qualify as a woman owned PR firm. But that's an example of thinking outside the box to make connections with people that it's a win where one plus one be, can add up to three instead of just uh, the, the limitations that you may have as your own small business. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Our question to you is, I know you've been in the small business arena and the procurement arena. So what would you tell small businesses who are looking to uh, gain past performance that may not have any past performance? Um, you know, we talk a lot about team and we talk a lot about, you know, subcontracting. But like I said, I know you've been in an arena. Um, what are some things that um, nuggets they can use in order to be able to create that past performance um, on that capability statements? Well, first off, it's not something that you can manufacture or fake. And if you do, you're in real trouble because if you get found out that you claim past performance that didn't exist, uh, your uh, a submission would certainly be discarded. Uh, but that's where I'm saying by partnering with organizations or um, whether it's a minority owned firm or woman owned firm or large business, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's looking for those partnerships where you can, where it's one plus one is three. The idea that you each bring something to, to the table that adds value. And as, as a, a somebody that's reading a proposal, they're looking for the best value in a contract proposal. And so that, that's one way of doing it is by finding um, people that have past performance experience that you don't qualify for, but they would be part of your team. And you can write that into your proposal in a way that uh, you have broader qualifications and look bigger than your small business might be. Thank you, sir. And that's all the questions I have for the moment. Um, if anybody in the audience has any questions or anything you want to elaborate on, please feel free to do so at this time. This has been wonderful information. I um, hope everybody has gotten some out of it. I know I have, and I appreciate it, man. I appreciate your service, and thank you for all that you do, you know, um, especially, and thank you for attending this webinar as well, being able to tap in, you know, to all the knowledge that you have to give to our, um, our audience. So I appreciate that as well. Do we have any questions from the audience? Anything, Nicole? Anything, Vaughn? Um, no, I don't see okay. anything. I'm sorry. Um, no, I've checked both the chat and Q&A. I don't see anything. Awesome, awesome. Well, if you're looking at the screen in front of us, that's Mr. Johnson's um, contact information. That is his phone number and his email address as well. Please feel free to reach out to him if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything. He's here to assist. Um, he volunteers with SCORE, and he also will lead you in the right direction should you know you need a mentor in another state or somewhere else but um this is contact information and this is our social media sites at the bottom as well <clears throat> please join us next week through the eyes of an sbl perspective and preparation needed for doing business with va that will be on april the 11th at 2 p.m and also join us on april the 13th on a thursday uh, at noon for doing business with the Department of Defense. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. This recording and this training, like I said, will be um, given to you. At the end of this, you will have a survey that comes up. Please um, take your time on the survey. You will see strongly disagree first because that's how the survey is set up. If you feel strongly disagree, 
you know, feel free to go ahead and select it. But if you strongly agree and enjoy this training, please let us know. Um, we take the survey and um, everything that you say is serious so we can constantly improve. Um, but make sure you can hit the strongly agree button at the end of it um, and submit the survey. I'd love to get 100% on the survey results. I thank everybody. Hope everybody have a wonderful day. Hope everybody enjoy the rest of their lunch. And if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, please, please feel free to email us at eyesofbluestrat.com. Thank Curtis, you. Curtis, yes, thank you for this opportunity to tell the score story. And uh, I look forward to hearing from people that need support and uh, SCORE mentors across the country are eager to help. Absolutely. Thank you once again. I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. All right, now, everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you. You as well. Bye now. All right. Take care.